Good morning, class. Um, my name is Okaku David, and I'll be taking a session on indexing and abstract services this morning as it relates to information management. Um, this online session is due to the fact that our traditional um, academic session has been disrupted due to the uh, outbreak of coronavirus, COVID-19, and we just have to make use of other um, platforms that have been presented to make sure that academic activities is not stop and we make the best use of this break session so that we not lag um, when the full session uh, comments and we believe that in no time um, other academic full academic session will be on and we'll be back to our normal regular classes. Nevertheless, the, this channel will serve as a backup and ensure that cont uh, classes continue without um, uh, affecting our normal regular classes and the students are encouraged to subscribe and make the best use of such platforms. Um, we, this morning we'll be talking about indexing and abstracting, though we'll be focusing on abstracting, but let's just give a preview of what we explained in an index to be. Last week we discussed index and we say it's a way of preparing and organizing the intellectual content of a document in order to hit easy retriever. It simply means an index presents a platform where uh, a document intellectual content are being picked out and uh, and arranged in a way to hit easy retriever of such documents whenever the need for them arises. Um, this means that it serves as a pointer to where certain information is in a particular material. And we describe abstract as um, a systematic process of extracting the content of a particular document. Uh, it's systematic in the sense that it is a process that ensures that the vital information in a particular document, no matter how detailed or how voluminous that document is, is put together in a summary view. Um, some people may ask, what is the difference between an abstract and as an and a summary, uh, a normal summary. An abstract is is systematic, and an abstract makes use of the professional language in a particular document. You are not; uh, it does not give you the freedom to 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 express yourself in your own language. It makes use of the professional language in a particular document. Um, now we discussed last week that there are different types of abstract. Um, but we'll be narrowing ourselves down to the five major types of abstract. Five major types of abstract. Close the, close the door. Five major type of abstract. We said that there, there are informative abstract, there is descriptive abstract, there is, there is um, um, critical abstract, there is slanted abstract, there is discipline-oriented abstract, there is mission-oriented abstract. But this uh, morning, we'll be explaining informative Abstract and informative abstract is a fine abstract that gives a concise, detailed um, summary view of a particular document in a single paragraph. That simply means that a, an informative abstract will state the problem of a study, how it was carried out in methodology, the, the method of analysis, the findings, the recommendations. Every detail of that particular information will be presented in one single paragraph. And that piece of abstract will represent a detailed, the detailed information of that document. So we refer to such abstract as informative abstract. Then we have the descriptive abstract. The descriptive abstract, just like the informative abstract, gives a detailed view of the intellectual content in a document in summary in a, in a summary manner but it will address them in paragraph formats that means it comes in a in a in a content table of content manner you know paragraph one may talk about the introduction paragraph two may talk about the 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 methodology paragraph three may talk about the the findings paragraph four may talk about the conclusions and recommendation in the sense that it uh, the abstract we we will not be in a single paragraph. Rather, it will be in several paragraphs, brief paragraphs, addressing the same issue. 
Then we have the third one, we call it the critical abstract. The critical abstract is an abstract, just like the name potent, critique. It critiques the information. That means it gives a, a critical view of whatever the deep, that information, that document is all about. It will give everything from the methodology to introduction to findings, but it will be very critical in the sense that it will present it in a way that okay, and makes it in a critical view. And it will evaluate it. It will tell if the methodology was good enough, if the findings were, if the scope was okay, if the recommendation covered what it intended to cover. It is a very detailed format, but it comes with a very critical ash view to assess that particular document and ensures that um, uh, it tells what that material is all about. And, and if that material contradicts itself, it will point out the areas that material contradicts itself and what ought to be done. We call such a, a critical abstract. Then there's the slanted abstract. People will call this the biased kind of abstract. A slanted abstract is quite different from other informative, but similar to, similar to slanted abstract, but similar to descriptive. Um, to critical, but the thing is that in slanted abstract, the it focuses on selected part of that document that will be useful to the users. For example, if I am a I'm a librarian and I'm to write an abstract on a particular document that talked about COVID nineteen, based on my background, I will write that abstract to suit the interest of maybe people in my profession, the information managers, the librarians. That means I, in my writing of that abstract on that document, I will teach in a way towards the interest from my own background. That can be called a slanted abstract. If a lawyer is to read that same document and to write an abstract about it, he will write an abstract and teach towards the legal profession. So we call such abstracts that are biased in nature based on the background of the person writing it as slanted. That means it is teetered towards a particular interest. It is teetered towards a particular view or towards a particular audience. Or let's assume I'm writing an abstract on a document and I know that it is meant for um, secondary school students or primary school students, then the tendency of me writing such abstract and teaching it towards the language style of my audience, which are the primary school, the secondary school, is likely to be there. Then we have on the, the last but not the least we'll be talking about the mission-oriented abstract. That an abstract that is written because of a specific purpose. It is meant to accomplish a specific purpose purpose. For instance, write an abstract about a document. Maybe you are viewing a document and say, write this abstract and make sure that it address this. So make sure that whatever the information you are bringing out from this document is treated towards this. It is called mission oriented. You have a mission and that abstract is to enhance the details of such that are embedded in that document concerning a particular field of knowledge. We call those, we call such mission-oriented abstract. Um, these are the five major types of abstract. We have the informative abstract, we have the descriptive abstract, we have the critical abstract, and we have the, we have the slanted abstract, and we have the mission-oriented abstract. There are some others like the Authors abstract, which and publishers abstract, which we will not dive into into so because the author can also be be the one writing the slanted abstract, the, the critical abstract, the critical abstract. So I will not. Say. So those are the five major types of abstract known to us in this studies. So um, that's all for lesson one. Definition of abstract is a summary view, it's a systematic view that presents a summary details of an information piece. And there are five major types of abstract the descriptive abstract, the informative abstract, the critical abstract, the slanted abstract, and the mission oriented abstract. That is the class for lesson one. And I believe um, the next class will be on where we talk about the functions and other aspects of abstract. Thank you very much.